Hello everybody, my name is T Bandit and today we're going to be learning Source Filmmaker. This video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be showing you on how I make my thumbnails using Source Filmmaker. Uh, let's get this down. When you open Source Filmmaker, you're basically just, you get to this screen and you don't know what to do next. First, you just name your project. I'm going to call it, um, these nuts, LMAO. Okay. The frame rate does not matter. If you're animating, then it does, but like if you, since we're making a poster, yeah, it doesn't really matter. First, you're gonna choose your map, right click, and load the map. Maps are normally categorized by what kind of map it is and the map itself. So if I wanted two fort, you do CTF underscore two fort. And I, since I have different two forts from the workshop, workshop is your friend. If you're working with Source film, Filmmaker, the workshop is definitely your friend. If I'm looking for Dust Bowl, it, it's capture points of CP, um, Dust Bowl. And there it is. Since Sawmill has different times of maps, you can do CTF underscore Sawmill. And then if you want the, the King of the Hill map, you do Koth underscore Sawmill. Right there. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to uh, uh, upward. It's it's a good map. Sometimes Source Filmmaker doesn't respond that much. See, it's not responding right now. So it, it it's normal. Source Filmmaker crashing and breaking. It's normal. Don't be worried unless you have a like a really bad PC. Then yeah, you should be worried. Move around. You hold down the left click button and to move to WASD. If you want to move faster, push Shift. Zoom in and out is like the scroll wheel. So first we're going to find the scene. Where do we want to go? It all really depends on what kind of what scene that you want. It also depends on the lighting and all that stuff. If your PC is running really low, then it's like if it's lagging a lot and you're not getting the same amount of frames that I have right now, I recommend you turning off lighting. So you can have more frames, but like for probably potato PCs, I recommend you turning off your light and finding the scene. But like in the end, when you're rendering, turn on the, back on the light. So first we're going to find where we want to go. Maybe right here is a good spot. I have a little area for my secondary viewport. I'm pretty sure you can get that from like, yeah, you can get that from here. Uh, second viewport, it will come right here and then you can put it right here. So I'm gonna make this my main area. I like to zoom in a bit and then maybe like adjust it, but like I can move the camera. What you really want to do, now this this is where the important part is. The green timeline lets you actually do stuff in Source Filmmaker and the, um, the blue one is the like, what's it gonna look like with all the, mo uh, like all the capturing and all that stuff. Turn into green in the middle um change scenes go to work camera change scene camera new camera and then it's going to create a camera one and camera two or a camera one and a work camera so you can see the camera what i'd like to do next is create an animation set underneath the camera one and it'll pop up right here and so you can actually uh do something with the camera do like a little effects so now you have the camera as a animation set. Next, we're going to get the characters. The characters. Now, the characters are what actually makes the scene pop out, and it's a good idea to find what you want to do with them. What I like to do is go on Pinterest and see all the poses that I can do and reference. It's a good idea to have a pose to work with, if you don't have a pose, I mean, you're working off of your head. It's going to be okay. I mean, it's all, all up to you. But what I really like to do is I, I make a pose. Um, I do it based off of a pose. We're going to be doing something that I really like doing. The engine here punching one. That, that one's that one's, a, that one's a classic. First, we're going to need the character model. It's going to be a hassle if you just scroll through all this stuff trying to find the actual model. But what's useful is using the filter. Basically, all you need to do is do to find the TF2 model that you want. Layer. It doesn't have to be TF2, of course. You can 
go in the workshop and try to find other characters and all that stuff. But like we're working with TF2, so player, and make sure that you write that you type in HWM so you can do an advanced face facial captions or something like that. And then slash the player that you want. So if you want scout, you can type in scout. If you want heavy, go on heavy. If you want engineer, the one that we're looking for, engineer. And do not be alarmed. That is normal. When you spawn him in, he is normal. See? Oh, T Bandit, how am I supposed to move him now? Well, get this. You just click on him. Ah! Ah! There's three different types of moving around. This one does not count. This one, it moves up, down, left, right. And then you can just like really. That one's self explanatory. This one, you can move around. You turn them. And you can, if you click on the middle, you can do specific moving. Like Help me! This one is all of them. So, if I want to move him around, click on the middle. Move him around. If I want to move him in a certain position, like that. if I want him to turn Help! specifically, like that. Also, Control Z is your other best friend. Very helpful. So now we're gonna get to the pose. First off, Engineer is has limbs, and all of them are connected to what limb you do. And you're like, hmm, I want that something to be smooth. Well, don't fret. If you right click on the engineer and go to rig and go to simple, you can move the engineer on a, on a rig. So it actually moves its elbow. It moves its elbow, but it doesn't move the shoulders, but, but you have to actually manually do that. It also moves the feet and the knee. And it moves the whole body too. It's fun. So next we're gonna get to the posing. The engineer that I'm doing is doing a pose. It's like like this. It's rate it's mainly for like moving the elbows and like posing and all that stuff. These over here are for your elbows. They adjust the elbows and stuff. And make his knee go up like this. You can do that. Knee his head on like this. There you go. Now, this may look weird. It's like, oh, t bandit that looks ugly as fuck. Like, why, why would we ever do that? Well, because you can do advanced stuff with it. See, look, I'm going back into the regular one. So you just, like, detach rig. Then you can flip this. Now, since he's not even close to the camera, what I like to do is move him and adjust him as I go. See, that's much better. Okay. So sometimes, for instance, you're not going to be able to see the arm. So what I'd like to do is switch to this mode and then pop it out a bit. Now the thing is, if they don't see it, then why animate it? When you manipulate the poses, you can make things actually look natural. Over here, this does not look natural at all. But to here, it actually looks cool. Now that we got the basic premise of the pose. Now I don't want this to be the official pose, but I'm pretty sure the hands aren't right. Hands are divided by three moving parts. If you want a specific hand, you go to the engineer, go to the fingers, you are you click on what specific finger, move up here to this area. Go to the hands, and then you go click the specific hand so left fist see it makes a fist but sometimes it looks a little bit goofy i like to, to adjust it a bit left point so it's pointing that's a good point left flat default and there we go this specific hand that i want to do so basically it's like remember sometimes things have to look unnatural to make it look natural so if you have to twist and turn and you'd be like, oh, I feel bad. I feel bad for the person. I feel bad for the character that, that I'm hurting him. There you go. See, look, 
that looks better. Now we're gonna make the other hand. Since some people are lazy and they don't really want to make a fist, they can always use this one. But since this is a tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to actually uh, do it manually. So first you're gonna go to the right fingers and now this is a bit overwhelming, a lot of stuff. But if you click the indexed pinky, make sure you click shift when you click pinky. Right click on the circle, go to rotation mode and local. And so it will create a fist. And then make sure to make it back to world. And then for the thumb, just make it into a fist. Now sometimes what I like to do is actually make a fist and see what it looks like. So I'm making a fist right now. It looks kind of unnatural. So maybe put this up, make this a bit to here, make this down. See, there we go. And there we go. There's the pose. So next we're going to be showing on the face. Click on the face and only just the face because if you click on the whole body you get this all in the way. I like to just click on the face so I, I don't have anything to see. We work on the face. This is the eyes part. Brown. You think it's not really changing anything but in reality it's changing this part. If you ever want to go back, you can right click on it and set the default. This left and right is useful because it does the specific area where you want it. So if you want the right to be sad and the other to smile, to smirk, the left, right. See, look, I want him to be angry. There we go. Next, we're going to be adding cosmetics. Depending on what cosmetic you have, it all depends on if it's uh, from a workshop or official Valve item. So you right click on the engineer, or I right click on your character and add TF2 items. This is only accessible to the TF2 people, TF2 mercs. So if I want the industrial festivizer, Go. and it'll automatically bind to the hat and if I want the and Arctic researcher right there there you go and if you want a specific workshop item there's a steam form I will be sure to provide it in the description the one that I use is this one it basically tells you all the cosmetics that are in the game so if you control f and search specifically so if i wanted to search for the frenchman formal um i type in frenchman formal it will tell me specifically what it is fancy coat spy right there and now if you want to use taunts you go you right click on the engineer you import and sequence and it will show you this you're like oh what the why is that uh, i don't know what is that so basically you scroll down right here so if you are looking for the crossy fix you go down until you find russian yeah now now, now look at look at him go look, look at him go next is the fun part the lighting Now the lighting is going to be the most important thing that pops out to literally everything. So if you if you can't see the lighting, enable lighting. So go to new light, click on the plus, new light. Now he's just he's, he's blinded by the lights, and we don't want that. So we go to camera, go to tone map scale, and set it to default. And the arrows are like, oh, still nothing happened. Go to the camera one. Everything is now dark. Now remember this. Go to radius. Double click on it. 0.1 for the shadow filter size go to 0.03 and then for the shadow depth bias make it a zero you can drag over the light thing like hold down and drag it over to here so you can actually control it cameras need three angles move it until it's a good angle to set this is basically setting the sun see i think that looks good next what you want to do is right click, copy, paste it, and then for this one, uh, right click on it, and then disable shadows. And so you move to here, 
move it all the way down to the bottom. It's like, oh, tree burn that's so bright. So that's why you turn off the intensity. What you should put here is the light, the actual lighting. And then next, we're gonna copy the light one, paste it right here, and this is going to be the back lighting. I was like, oh, it's not, it's not that intense. Why are you supposed to then, then increase it? Now, in result, you get this, and it looks really cool. And then you can click on the first timeline, and then you can see what it actually looks like. So next, what we're going to be doing is actually placing the light around. Basically, you're just filling in the lights. Now, what's next? What I'd like to do is go download something on the workshop called Paintable. This, Paintable. It's basically a white panel. It's like, oh, too bad, what, what's, the, what's the point of this? This is, this is just like the most useless thing. Well, if you have a certain rig, uh, set up model colors, but it's on the workshop. It basically sets all the colors. If you want to do like specific paints, um, you can do a certain color, black, and then do that. And you got a black screen. It was like, oh, what's the point of this? Oh, that's, it's for the cinematic things. So you add scale if it's not large enough. You can add the little cinematic things. I want him to be popping out of the thing. So be like that. And then copy, paste, go up and then tilt down. And I want it to be behind the fist, at least behind the fist. So it looks like he's popping out. He's actually getting out. And it looks cooler like that. Next, go to the camera. The focus distance is basically where you want it to be blurry. The aperture is where you want the motion blur to be. The bloom scale is makes it a little shinier but I don't mess with that. Uh, the SSAO bias, just the shadows and like the strength of it and the radius shows where lighting is going to be. That's what you need to worry about. Okay, so let's move on to the rendering process. First, we're going to want to go to, first we're gonna save the file, of course, and then we're going to export as a poster. Make sure the format is PNG or JPEG. Make sure to rename the poster because the next time you make a poster and you, its name is poster, it's going to override the first one that you did if its name is poster or all that stuff. And it's going to delete it with no warning. So make sure to name it. It's gonna look like that. It should only take a little bit, but in the end, it's gonna be all fine. Now that you're done with the rendering process, go find it. What I like. What I normally like to do is go on Canva. So you're gonna upload file. Like, oh look, it's right there. What I like to do with some T-Bana pizzazz is have the line, a green line. I basically like to put it in the corners. If I want to have a specific text of someone saying something. There, we don't we don't question about it. <laughs> if it's a TF2 video, I would put this in the top. Go to share, go to download, and then so just download that. And there you go. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe, like the video, and uh yeah, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye-bye.